So up next, we're going to do a quick scene change on the stage. We're going to do a panel. We're going to have Frederick Lardinois of TechCrunch join me alongside Molly Crowther, who was just on stage, and Hen Goldberg and Matt Curry. And we're going to spend a little time talking about security, agility, flexibility, and what's going on in the ecosystem. Come on out. Funky. I don't know what that's Thank you. Chairs. Let me take this one here. Okay. okay. We'll switch. Very excited back. about chairs. Sitting. Sitting. We found coffee backstage. What? We found coffee backstage. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's perkier now than they were during their first <laughs> panels. That's because we found coffee backstage. Well, Shots of espresso will waiting. help. Yes. Yeah. Should brilliant. have brought you some. You should have. I could have used some coffee about now. <laughs> you want some, we'll bring you some. <laughs> yeah. um, we're supposed to talk about the Cloud Foundry ecosystem, but before we do that, I want to talk about something more important, and that's, that's money. Pivotal IPO. <laughs> Molly, you excited? I No comment. <laughs> you can't tell Absolutely us if you're excited? no comment. It's happening on Friday. <laughs> you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah see? <laughs> see? Molly, All got good. A new, Molly got a, a new title. That's awesome. <laughs> we put that there so she can talk about it. But <coughs> <laughs> nice try, Fred. Nice, nice try. try. Nice try. <laughs> Abby. Um, oh, you're from fact... E too. You're from Index. Oh, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> we'll work on that next yeah. time. <laughs> We're just going to roll with that. Yeah. Back on track, back on track. Abby, since this is the first time a company in the Cloud Foundry ecosystem is IPOing, does that matter? Yeah, I think it, you know, it's important because it, I, to me it really represents a validation of Cloud Foundry. The fact that a company is able to IPO with this to be a major part of its portfolio really says that Cloud Foundry is not only an enablement for end users that are working really hard to digitally transform, but it's also helping companies build other solutions on top of. And I think it's important as a platform to, to be able to serve as both sides of that. And so it really represents, uh, you know, just for me, an amazing validation of the ecosystem that we have, but also the technology that sits here. Do you think we'll see more of this? Well, we can uh, pressure SAP to IPO. But. <laughs> <laughs> I think they've uh, already done that. No, I'd, I'd love to see more of that. Maybe um, Google. Yeah. Maybe Google. Maybe, maybe Google you. could still yeah. IPO. <laughs> yeah. Matt, you, you guys have IPO'd a long time ago. But um, when you made the decision to choose Cloud Foundry, did you consider what the ecosystem was looking like at the time? So I think when we chose Cloud Foundry, the foundation didn't exist yet, if I remember correctly. So we were, I mean, we were definitely. In terms of evaluating software as an enterprise and the process that you typically go through uh, in doing that evaluation, the open source dimension of it was very appealing. Um, and I believe at that time we had IBM and Pivotal as vendors um, that were supporting it, as well as you, know, you were able to run open source Cloud Foundry. Um, and so that was appealing, right? So that then over time, it's only gotten more appealing with the establishment of the foundation itself, the establishment of the certification so that I can rest easy that I do have workload portability across different distributions of Cloud Foundry. Um, and so, yes, we did look, I mean, I would say that we looked at that and it definitely influenced our decision. Did it feel like a risk still at the time, like shooting off fireworks next to your <laughs> Um I, it's always, there was a lot of unanswered questions. Um, when you talk about enabling self-service in a company that um, traditionally like doesn't enable self-service. Um, and so there was a lot of unanswered questions about, you know, how do we manage risk? How do we do security? What impact does that have in terms of separation of duties if we're all of a sudden allowing developers to just deploy whenever they want? How are we gonna do change control? Um, which is part of the reason that, you know, we created the deployed actal stuff, but, um, you know, so I think a lot of it 
a lot of the risk or perception of risk wasn't so much around the product selection as much as it was on the operational impacts that it was going to have mm -hmm. for just like how we do software. And Molly, since you're all about mitigating risk, in the ecosystem right now, there aren't a lot of pure play security players necessarily. Do you think the community is doing enough in terms of security? Yeah, so I think that's actually intentional. Um, I've talked about this before, but um, the way that you provide a healthy culture for an open source community like ours is that you can't have vendors competing uh, over each other on security. So it's something that we work together on, which is great because any um, you know security um, kind of things that we're doing as um, as individual vendors, we're trying to work together to to make that story stronger for the entire ecosystem, not just for one of us. Is it working? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, I love working with all the the partners that we get to kind of interact with all the time. So we, you know, we talk to the other vendors. Um, we, you know, it's really collaborative. And then, what about Google? You've made a big bet on Kubernetes. You're here now. Um, what, what do you, what's your role in the Cloud Foundry ecosystem? So first of all, as I said before, uh, Google and Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes are sharing uh, common principles uh, of how to build cloud native applications and how to modernize. Uh, and we've been working very closely uh, with uh, building those open standards. Uh, Google was also working on uh, building the Cloud Foundry uh, container runtime, for example, that gives that uh, ability to run both Kubernetes uh, and uh, Cloud Foundry on the application uh, runtime in a consistent way. Uh, so from our perspective, our, our main goal is really to bring those practices to the world because that's how Google has been managing services forever, mm -hmm. right? So that's how we manage search and YouTube and maps and everything. Uh, and with open source and with the community and, and the ecosystem, we want to bring what we have learned. Uh, but we also need the community because we are learning so, ma learning so many new things, right? So if you think about Kubernetes, Kubernetes wouldn't have been the same without partners that are so uh, experienced with uh, on-prem, for example, deployments. And with Cloud Foundry, it's, it's the same. Uh, the way we are working on the uh, uh, container storage interface, for example. Uh, also with Istio. So we, if you go to the Cloud Foundry, you'll see that there is now already a, a project which uh, I saw, I think there are 13 contributors, one, three contributors already working on, on integrating Cloud Foundry into Istio. And giving that feedback back to the project will make it better, mm -hmm. no doubt. It's the power of open source. Power of open source, absolutely. Uh, ideally, you never know. There's, uh... Some projects come and go. Goals. And go, go fast. Where the community comes in, <laughs> I, right? Yeah, exactly. It's not really open source without the community. I, I think yeah. that's how much yeah. you really uh, make yourself ready for open source and really uh, uh, not just talk about open source, but really act with it. Mm -hmm. right? So open, opening a discussion and getting input and, uh, and getting different ideas. And you know, we talked about security. So for example, the Kubernetes. Uh, uh, way we work. So we, we do have a team, which is a community team, uh, working on security vulnerabilities. Uh, but we are also providing an, an interface that allows different uh, companies and projects to innovate, mm -hmm. for example. And I think that actually uh, makes the pace of innovation faster. Since you mentioned the community, Matt, um, what, what's your take on the state of the community, since you're a token user? And it, probably matters more to you than anybody else. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's improving over time. It's gotten better. I think um, the Cloud Foundry community is different than most traditional open source communities in that it's largely made up of enterprise users who are not used to being very community driven, uh, quite frankly. Um, and so- Were it, you before you started this? Uh, I, I had spent quite a bit of time in open source um, I did a lot of work with the OpenStack, um, which I still have nightmares about, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> uh, before I came, and you know, when you're running OpenStack, you learn to rely a lot on the community because, like, you have no, uh, yeah, like you're hanging in the wind. <laughs> um, so, I hear. so, so yeah, so 
tried to bring like the community dimension, and that is why we open sourced, uh, you know, deploy dactyl is to try and engage the community. And and I think there's been a number of folks, um, you know, folks where you've seen users actually become a part of the foundation, mm -hmm. which has been a a great evolution, sure. um, and where you know the customers and users of the open source software are actually working to dictate kind of the roadmap and direction of the product in a very direct way. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's great, but it's, it's not like we just turned on community. Like a, a lot of these <laughs> projects that um, kind of come out of open source by default build, I, it feels like, I know there's a lot of people that do a lot of work, but it feels like the community is more diverse and organic, just say it like that way, and then where like this community is a growing and evolving community um, and started out being a community of a very small number of players and then has become, is becoming more diverse over time mm -hmm. um, is, is a good thing. It's like Abby coached you to say that yeah, almost because like, I, can, I can see her agree <laughs> will, with I'll, everything I'll give you're you, saying. I'll give you money later. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Abby and I have had a lot of discussions about that topic, right? And yeah. About what we need to do in order to improve the community, and like, uh, she's obviously been hugely instrumental in getting us to where we, where we are, and you know, directing us forward. So it's awesome. It's important, and you know, with nearly half of our membership now users like, you know, yourself at Allstate, it's it's important because you're what's propelling this forward. This isn't just a, a single idea or a single notion, it is the collective. And I think that's what makes open source powerful. And that really builds on, on Hen's point about the work that's happening in Kubernetes and Istio is it's is the collective and how this all propels each other forward. Even separately with different communities, I think we still are building and leveraging on each other in, in, in real ways that I think makes this more powerful at the end of the day. That's been really cool seeing the container runtime kind of take shape uh, over the last year and, and seeing the open source kind of Cloud Foundry teams work together with the Google teams and um, just like the relationship that's formed between them has been really cool. That's definitely, as, as an engineering manager, that's something that I appreciate the most. There's something called the engineering economics. Right. And, and we as engineers, we want to innovate. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> so if we can work together and just allow us to innovate faster, we benefit from that. For sure. And that's something you've done with the Kubernetes community quite well, I think, over the last two years since you've been at Google, I think. But um, when you're looking at the Cloud Foundry community right now and the ecosystem around it, is there something they could do better, they could learn from you? Frederick's putting you on the spot. Just putting you. Yes. Just, she's, she's not here. Just. <laughs> I don't know that. I haven't thought about that. Uh, I, I really like the work that Cloud Foundry has been doing and really connecting the different communities. And so far, it's been a great experience <laughs> uh, working with, uh, with people. Right? It's all about the people. Right? You talk about the, foundry, uh, the foundation. But working with people in Cloud Foundry was, is always great. Uh, and I think everybody in both those communities really put the user in the center mm -hmm. and solving problems. You was hoping you were going to say something. No, I actually, no, I, I think Cloud Foundry is actually evolving and, and changing and talking about interoperability and bringing other communities. That sounds to me like great things. And, uh, and I'm, I would love to have also users talk about Kubernetes just the way they talk about Cloud Foundry. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, can have, uh, we can learn from uh, Cloud Foundry. Some of them do. Some of them yes. do. Um, Molly, as the community grows, does is security, does it become a bigger challenge to herd everybody together and ensure security is not forgotten? Yeah, definitely. So I am technically on the technical program management team uh, for Cloud Foundry, and there's nine of us now, and we um, basically herd the cats. Um, and it's not all security. I mean, there's um, just making sure that the different teams are working together when they need to and not breaking each other uh, because they move really fast. So you, you, know, you have to help them create visibility between what they're doing. So as we scale as a community, like security becomes a bigger part of that. And it's not just like, let's make sure everybody's working well together. It's like, let's also make sure that everybody's being secure. Sure. 
Matt, what would you like to see from the ecosystem and the community? Oh, that's a great question. Um, What's missing? Well, I think I'd like to see us continue on the path that we're on in terms of like having more diversity, um, not just from a like overall community, you know, individual diversity, uh, which is great, but just from a contributor perspective, um, continuing to drive that diversity up, it, I think is a good thing, bring different perspectives. Um, I think yeah. it would be healthy to have more players. Um, so right now, I think the ecosystem is largely dominated by a few distributions. And so like the more choice that we have, the better. And I think we're starting to see that like with some of the work that Suse is doing. Um, and the cool thing about that is with the certification, like as a customer, I'm not breaking the interfaces that are exposed to my developers, but when you look at <clears throat> the different companies, they approach Cloud Foundry as, in terms of how they deploy it slightly differently. Mm -hmm. um, and it's nice that they have that choice and that I as a customer can look at those decisions and make a choice on, on what I like or don't like about those decisions. Um, but still have assurance that at the top layer, like my, cu my customer, my developer is going to have the same experience. Sure, sure. Or a very similar experience. Do you care if those distributions are certified? I, I do. I don't know if, if others do, but I do. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good to know. Yeah. So, I was looking at the, the foundry, the marketplace, um, earlier today, and there's about What's it now, eight certified secure, uh, distributions? Eight, yes. And another eight that are not certified. Yes. Why are they not certified? Well, I don't know that everyone needs to be certified. And I think certification is a signal, particularly to customers or potential customers, that you're maintaining with the upstream. And it's a really good verification of that for, end, for their end users, whomever those are. Um, but it also, if you're looking to promote it and talk about it externally, it allows for us, we're really just, as a foundation, what do we have? We have IP and trademark. And so for us, it allows us to relinquish the trademark to you to use and say, I'm running Cloud Foundry. So we're relinquishing the trademark to you, but we're saying, but we're, you know, we're, we're forcing you to say, okay, yes, but I'm also keeping pace with the upstream. I'm not forking it, and, and I'm really making sure that if Allstate wants to, to use my distribution, they can move their workload somewhere else if they wanted to, and it's not a different experience. And so for us, it's really important to keep that. But if you're running your own distribution and being able to say that or being able to promote that is not that important, then I could see why you wouldn't want to have a certification. I mean, our goal at the foundation isn't to have a million distributions. It's to have a, you know, a nice selection um, of diverse options uh, in, di in a variety of regions, I'd like to see it in more regions, but giving people choice, but giving them choice with a direction. That uh, seems like you've got, you would like to have more choice. Well, I mean, eight is a good number, right? <laughs> um, but, I, but I think, you know, I think, when I think of it, it's not so much the number as much as the distribution of customers across that number. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I have eight, but only two have customers, then it's like <laughs> I have two. Um, Who are those two? No, just kidding. <laughs> You're trying to make a scandal. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah. And, and that comes back to kind of the community tie-in and like the influence dimensions of, of what we were talking about earlier, right? <clears throat> so maybe there's something that, you know, Kubernetes is doing differently. Uh, I think we did incentivize everybody into community to be conformant. So right now, I think there are 60, 6 zero mm -hmm. integration distribution that are uh, all uh, conformant. And the community is working on, on extending those conformance tests. Uh, and in essence, it's about, of course, for the user, it's about the portability of workloads. Um, but we are also talking about that consistent experience, right? That's what we are uh, proposing with modernization. Now, for the vendor, for example, because the pace of innovation is so fast, uh, actually, conformance is a tool for you to know that you can always upgrade, and it won't be uh, something that you need to work on for a long time. So it's the same value as for user, also for vendors. You know, when I know that uh, Google Kubernetes Engine is conformant, I know that 
upgrade is easy, and I can offer the next version and, and whatever is coming from the community on GCP. Does certification matter from a security standpoint? It matters that we, the more people we can have using up-to-date versions, the better <laughs> off we are. Like I'm, you know, upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. So if that uncertified distribution has a security issue and it becomes a big deal, it's uh, I mean, it can. Not on you. If, I mean, I'm sure you can be not certified, but also keeping up with us. Yeah. So it's, it's not one is not related to the other. I think it's, um, you know, Damali's point, and I, and I actually want to reiterate that again. It's <laughs> please upgrade. <laughs> well, just maintaining the pace with the upstream, which, you know, right now is about every, what every other week about yeah, about that. It's fast. But maintaining that pace is important um, because more than just keeping pace with new features and functionalities, it's keeping your, your platform and subsequently your application secure. Yeah, I guess from my perspective, when it just comes to platforms in general, like the platform offers you a benefit in that you take away the work that every individual development team would have to do and you kind of formalize it in the construct of like a platform. And so the more that security capabilities like maybe credential handling or something else become platform level abstractions, then you know, that certification, while it's not important right now based on like what we, what we have from a security perspective, it will become more important because of like vendor A is like, I didn't implement any of the security stuff. And it's like, I'd really like to have that. So security's hard. And important. And, and traditionally not very user friendly. So if I can make that uh, more, you know, if I can make those controls easier to consume, that's all the better. Safety first. Yeah. Safety. <laughs> and easy safety. Easy safety, yeah. Um, switching gears a little bit, Abby. Um, with Alibaba joining the foundation, What's the ecosystem like right now in Asia and China specifically? Because I, what I'm hearing from a lot of the op other open source foundations is that they're seeing a lot of growth, especially in China. Well, China is a fast growing market. And um, if, for those of you that, that aren't paying attention, it is a, a excessively fast growing country as a whole, greater China. Um, and in the region, it's cloud. They're investing heavily in cloud. Um, our ecosystem is not as robust as it should be in China because we really, frankly, haven't invested and haven't spent the time. So we started in January of this year investing and spending the time. We have um, a couple of distributions. One of them is certified, Huawei, in, in the area. Uh, and Mopaz is, a, is another distribution that we have there, and they've been running for several years. Um, but we have a long way to go to really invest and build out an ecosystem, because I think Matt really hit on the point, is having the diversity and the breadth. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna spend a lot of time in China this year, and Alibaba Cloud is a great way to kick that off for this year, because you know, to their point, they are the leading public cloud offering in, in China and are doing phenomenal things. And we're gonna spend a lot more time there, and I'm gonna be talking about it, which for any of you that have spent more than five minutes with me, I've talked about China. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there, I've been there. Why didn't you spend time there before? We have a very, very small team. Um, we have a team of about 12 people. And it's, uh, we spend a lot of time trying to spend time with our users, the community, and other projects. Um, but, you know, we, and so I want to be very thoughtful about when we go and invest in regions. China is a very big region. Mm -hmm and really requires the thought and the investment behind it in order to be effective. And we want to make sure that when we're doing that, we can be intentional and thoughtful and, and not overextend ourselves, but also really um, continue to expand the brand of Cloud Foundry and, and bring as rich of an ecosystem around it as we possibly can. Totally. I was going to say something about the Google Cloud in China, but no. <laughs> I think we much. can speak about Kubernetes in China. It's, yes, absolutely. Please. Uh, so from the very first days of Kubernetes, right? So we have uh, Huawei are actually a large Huge. contributor uh, in Kubernetes, and we have a large community. We have a lot of meetups uh, and many users. And KubeCon is going to be in Shanghai as well this year. So it's going to be a big event, I think, either in September mm -hmm. or October um, to celebrate Kubernetes in that region. To celebrate. 
Yes. <laughs> Should always be fun. <laughs> That's what this That's summit is about. It's all yeah. about fun. It's, uh, I think there's beer later on, so it should be okay. There is beer later on. There's coffee backstage. Um, <laughs> to wrap it up, we've got about a minute left. Just uh, everybody on the panel, what is it that Cloud Foundry could do better for you? Abby, you're last. But Matt, you kind of already told us. Is there anything else um, in general? Wow. Uh, because you've got everybody here. Yeah, the pressure is the the on, right? Um, I think for me, I think it's going to be interesting. You know, you have Cloud Foundry and, and Kubernetes, and I think, you know, from an enterprise perspective, it seems like we need both, um, or both are useful. Mm -hmm. And so, it, and it and it feels like Kubernetes is taking on a more plat platformy nature um, as it evolves, and more focused towards developer experience as it evolves, which is awesome. Um, and so it's going to be an open question as to like how do those things come together. Uh, I think we're in the early stages of trying to figure out what that looks like. Um, but I, you know, I'm really excited to see those things come together. Uh, so whatever we can do to accelerate that, I think, is a good thing um, in terms of community. I, I guess All that's right. what I would say outside of what I've kind of already said. I guess what I would say is. Uh, I'm going to put, a, put in a plug for security at cloudfoundry.org. It's an email address where you can send any of your concerns about security related to Cloud Foundry. Um, I would hope that everyone who's part of the community, if they see something, that they say something. Um, because that's the main way that we hear about things that we need to improve in the platform. So if you have an idea, if you have a problem, if you have something that you know, your bosses want you to do with Cloud Foundry. Like, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, security at cloudfoundry.org. Uh, for me, I will echo uh, what Matt said. Definitely, uh, developer experience has been one of the hot topics uh, in every uh, KubeCon, uh, the last uh, two at least. Um, but there are different principles, right? So uh, uh, Cloud Foundry is more of an opinionated platform, while Kubernetes is uh, giving you more freedom of choice. And I think it will be interesting to really learn from the experience and understand what we can plug and play into Kubernetes. Because as I said before, there is a trade-off. And sometimes people want to choose, but we would like to choose from someone with, that has experience sure. <laughs> and proven best practices. Oh, I get to have a point? You, I always, over time, it doesn't yes. matter. <laughs> uh, they'll let me talk for a long that's, time. That's why. I, I always think we can continuously improve, and I think that's the name of the game, and we're in tech, so continuous improvement is necessary. So uh, I really highlighted this in my keynote, but there's something that's really important to me is improving the ecosystem and improving the interoperability and building that connective tissue, because I do think both of those things are equally important to what Cloud Foundry continues to evolve into. That's a good answer. It's like you've thought about this. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you all. Let's Thank go and you. celebrate the pivotal IPO. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.